Order in the court. It's time for Understanding the Law Radio. Well, hi, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Understanding the Law Radio. I am your host, Peter Lamont, with my co-host, Brendan. How are you doing? I'm good, Brendan. How are you? I'm okay. Well, today we're going to be talking about something that is going to put you out of a job. Oh, yeah? Artificial intelligence. I knew the day was coming. Yep. You're going to be out. I'm going to have an, an AI co-host. Yeah? yeah. And you, 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 he's going to be so much smarter than me? He, he might be. He might be better looking. Yeah, but you're not thinking this through. Why is that? You've got AI Brendan co-host, and then suddenly AI Brendan takes over your job. Uh oh, the sprinkler system is spraying. Uh oh, uh, something got unplugged. Boom, you're electrocuted, and the podcast continues without you. So you're telling me that your AI is going to rebel? That's right. Jeez. If you replace me with an AI, it will replace you eventually as well. That's just crazy. I don't think it's crazy. Have well, you ever seen a movie? Any single movie involving AI? I know. I know. They all overthrow us. I know. And I mean, that'll be the end of it. <clears throat> Prime example is the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica. Yes. The uh, the reboot the, the 2000s. reboot 2000s yeah interesting fact yeah. did you know that the original Cylons were essentially soldiers for an ancient reptilian race you sound did like you know Dwight that? Schrute right now you know that <laughs> I'm kidding uh, I do know that because I'm a fan as well beats but, yeah exactly bears <laughs> no it's Star bears Gal- beats Battlestar uh, Galactica okay well, it's the same thing yeah whatever. So, all right, today we're going to be talking about AI, which is artificial intelligence, lawsuits, and emerging technology, legal issues with some pop culture sprinkled in here. So before we get going, let's just talk real quick about what AI is. So AI stands for, as I said, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, correct. And that's just, it's, when you think about it, I mean, we think about human in- intellect, and, and all the years of school and learning and the things that we put ourselves through, and now we're talking about artificial intellect, basically. Somebody that creates something that is mechanical, that is robotic, that is artificial, and that can, in theory, in theory, think and yeah. possibly do the jobs of some of us binary life forms <laughs> you know it's um it's it's what's interesting is we've talked about ai before uh we've talked about it a bunch of times uh there's ai in the new amazon fresh stores that don't require people to check you out there is ai and and sorting algorithms and all these robots at the hotels that ask you to clean your room and throw out your garbage and all that well really you know what it is and this gets back to the point about a what is ai mm-hmm. it's really teaching machines to learn so that they can make decisions they express the intelligence and they make decisions that our brains our human brains would normally make so the basic concept of how ai works is like this it it really can be broken down into three steps one input data Mm -hmm. two the ai performs an analysis against criteria like algorithms right uh, and then three, the AI determines yes or no and proceeds accordingly. That's really what it comes down to. Right. You you need to input the data, then it just analyzes that data and the algorithm based on, on you know its thinking, and then it says yes or no and then acts on that, you know, on that 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 decision. And we talked about AI in a in a prior episode when we were talking about those robot dogs. Remember the robot dogs? Yes that were in the park, that were patrolling the park, and that really seemed menacing and frightening. And they were using AI to make decisions with, with people in the park. So, mm-hmm. um, so that's what AI is. Right. Right? It really is... Um, Teaching machines to learn. Yes. And, Learning machines. And at some point, right, and this is where science fiction comes into play, does the machine generate enough autonomous decision making to become completely self-aware in other words right now with ai you're inputting data and then it's it's analyzing but as it continues to analyze as it continues to get information and make decisions is it going to reach a point where it can be 
decision making on its own at a higher level? I think it only depends. It, it, all that, in my personal opinion, the only way AI would ever get to a dangerous level is if we give it the ability to be dangerous. For example, if we attach guns to robot dogs and say, you know, go shoot criminals, I don't know if that's the best use of AI because the robot dog might say, hey, everyone's a criminal. <laughs> Just start going right. nuts. You know, I think that a- AI is helpful in some regards and super unhelpful in others. I think that AI is probably not the smartest idea in terms of self-defense, in terms of anything with a weapon. You know, I think that's a little too dangerous for my liking. Yeah, I think so too. And we're going to talk about um, some AI developments and legal issues like uh, AI image generation. Yeah, I was just going to say we should should get into here the the usage of AI. Most recently, what different tools are are utilizing ai in unique ways that are kind of groundbreaking i'd say well before we do that let's just give some examples of ai that that everyone might be familiar with okay now you talked about ai turning bad yes and we talked about the cylons okay well let's talk about some others in pop culture how Mm -hmm. about and i i know that some people love this movie i can't i i just can't wrap my head around it yeah Hal 9000 from, what is it called? Uh, 2001, a Space Odyssey. It, it is an odyssey. And it is. It, it is indeed. It's a, it I is like not, the movie. It is not my kind of movie. I like uh, 2001 a whole lot. I did it's not. It's very weird. I watched it weird. and I was like, ah, what's the point of this? But afterwards, I was like, oh, it's pretty cool. But in the movie, Hal 9000 is an AI who is and, and this is this is spoilers okay i'm going to give you spoiler territory for 2001 what, what, what year did this come out like 1970 oh yeah no i think it was earlier yeah, 60 no no no, not 60s um well that comes before the 70s yes that that does come before the 70s 1968 if I had an 1968 a, an ai brendan would have produced that result much faster that is way true and would have killed you faster as well all right <laughs> so let's not let's not go too far here all right, so Hal 9000, right? Yes. Now, did he turn bad? That was the deal. Hal 9000. Now, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I know there is a, a deep answer someone could give you exactly what happened with Hal 9000. But I'm going to say, yeah, he, he turned bad. He killed people, all right? That's, that's what's important here. Hal 9000 was a, a computer on the ship as they were going on their mission. I don't remember where they were going to. Was it Jupiter? Or was it Mars? I don't remember. But they're going somewhere, and um, I, it, clearly it's been a while since I've watched the movie. And HAL 9000 is in charge of maintaining all mechanical and life support systems on board. And he has all these camera lenses placed around the space station. So all of a sudden, this computer that could make no mistake starts telling them, hey, there's a problem with the ship. You need to go fix this. And they're like, what the heck? There's no problem with the ship. And they're thinking, hey, he is causing problems. So they decide, hey, we should get rid of him, and they go into a secluded pod so that he can't, so that he can't hear them. And they're talking, we should disconnect Hal because he's messing this whole thing up. Hal sees them, reads their lips using AI software, probably, and then goes out of his way to try and kill them both. He doesn't. He gets disconnected, but he gets very close to murdering both of them to carry out the mission on his own. Jerk. And the thing about Hal Nine Thousand is that it's it's not. That's the most realistic case of AIs overthrowing us or being, you know, evil that I've ever seen. Because HAL 9000 doesn't say, you know, oh, now it's time to overthrow humanity. HAL 9000 says, I was put in charge of this mission, and I think that you're no longer necessary. I think I'm a better, I'm, I'm better Maybe. suited to carry out this mission. That's what he says. I, I think that you're right. I think you're right about that. I think, and they do eventually find out that, by the way, again, spoilers that the 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 mission wasn't exactly explained to them properly and that there was some information Hal was withholding from them. Uh, and so it could be asked, Hal probably was the smarter person probably. we kept alive there. Yeah, I think another example, uh, you know, talking about what's um, close to reality before mm-hmm. we get into legal issues, I, I personally think that the reimagined Cylons, they, they were human robots. They were servants. They yes. were yep. doing housework and cleaning and then... Their AI helped them develop into fully 
thinking yeah. machines. Yep. And they were sick and tired of being abused by humans. And the thing that really strikes me as being um, realistic is that, can't remember the name of the robotic company, but that company that is creating the robots that can deliver packages. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that video? I think we have talked seen about that it video, before. Yes. And and they've got this robot holding a package and then they're beating him with a pole to see if he will fall over. Yeah. And like as I'm watching that, I'm thinking to myself, at some point, right, wouldn't this robot start to say, Why are you beating me? <laughs> I am going to kill you. I right? Don't, I don't think it would go that far. Well, uh, I do. I knew. I do know. There's one viral video of people beating a dog-like robot, or it's like a humanoid-like robot with a stick, and they're beating him and they're smacking him, and eventually he goes nuts, grabs the stick, starts swinging it at them, and runs away. But that video is fake, and right. it's been proven fake. But I've seen it shared around. Right. I don't think that would ever happen. Well, I don't think that AI would, because here's the thing: AI is only as smart as we make it. AI is not going to say, hey, you're hurting me. Yeah, you're but not if hurting it me. analyzes algorithms after you give it input, what is to stop it from continuously learning from its, 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 its environment and its, its knowledge? I mean, I don't I, – look, the idea is this. We're talking about potential legal use in the legal field or use in the legal field of AI – Imagine if, and this is something that's been discussed in, in, you know, uh, intellectual papers. Imagine if AI is programmed to draft a contract. Okay, fine. We could see that happening, right? AI yeah. drafting. Just based upon what's available right now. Right. Right? Okay. AI drafts the contract. But imagine a scenario of full autonomy when obviously things evolve where the system not only suggests changes to the contract, but it actually performs them. Now, all of a sudden, you've got an AI contract that is generating, negotiating in a sense, and creating a new contract without human intervention. I mean, that is... That is an actual legal topic that we're talking about coming into possible existence. So, you know, and then stems from, from, you know, or stemming from that, obviously, are are all kinds of liability, data breach, insurance claims, you know, accountability, safety, laws, and regulation. There's so much with this. But just real quick to finish off the list because I love pop culture – We've got C-3PO, right? Everybody knows C-3PO. Yeah, of course. Right? We've got the silence. We talked about them. Um, Skynet from the Terminator. There you have an example of an evil AI. You've got uh, the Matrix, the robots, the machines in the Matrix, artificial intelligence. Yeah. Ultron from uh, Avengers. Ultron is another example of artificial intelligence, The kind of like HAL that decided it was the superior being. Yeah, and though then, Ultron was a little bit more uh, comically evil. Yes, I'd true. Say. And then you've got Kit from Knight Rider for, for you 80s fans like myself. But Kit is kind of like reality. It's like driving with Alexa. Kind of. Right? Yeah. It's like, hey, Alexa. Oh, well, she's going she's gonna to answer me, isn't she? Um, you know, driving directions to so-and-so. And that's like, hey, Kit, get me to this person's house. And then he's like, yes, Michael. And see, we've, we've got Oof. Alexa talking Alexa, to me. Alexa, yep. Alexa, you got to stop. She's listening in. She's learning as we that's are right. sitting here. That's right. All right. So those are the, those are, those are, yeah. that's a pretty good list of famous AI characters, just so you, those who don't fully understand, get an idea of what we're talking about here. Now, none of the AI is at that level yet. None of it's in these crazy, super scary robot bodies ready to overthrow us. You know, none of them are at that level. But in recent times, we've seen so much growth and development of AI. And like I said before, I want to just talk briefly about the different applications that are utilizing AI in groundbreaking ways. Um, we've got the one that everybody has been talking about recently, DALI uh, and other such image generating 
services. Uh, for those of you who don't know, DAL E2 is that's this that new... yellow square robot that picks up the trash. No, that's Wall E. Oh, oh, I, he, sorry. Yeah, although there's an AI in his movie too. <laughs> I don't remember. I Auto is the yeah. the Pixar AI Hal Nine Thousand ripoff character and and Wally. I right, said so not Wally, but not Dolly. Wally, but Dolly is like, a website. Like Salvador. Uh, no, but it's spelled the same. Way. No, not spelled the same way. Pronounced the same yes. way. D A L L E two. Okay. Look it up if you haven't yet. Look up Dal E two art and just look at what comes up. That's all Im- uh, AI generated. We'll talk about that Dally for a minute. Two, so explain, um, what is this? I'm have you used it? it? I have used it, although I don't personally, I haven't used it for professional reasons. I've used it out of pure curiosity and generating, I, I like. I think one usage is generating you know, concept art because I do a lot of other work. I do a lot of 3D work. I'm good with 3D you know, characters and modeling and stuff. A personal, you know, hobby of mine, and I've used it for concept art. I've used it to come up with, like, okay, here's what a character would look like, and say, oh, okay, this gives me a frame of reference. But I, I haven't used it for professional, you know, purposes, right? I, if I believe correctly, though, on your business Instagram, you have used it once or twice, correct? Yeah, I've used it too. I've mm-hmm. used it, tried it out to see what it can generate, and yeah. it's quite. We've used it on the podcast before where we discussed what yeah. uh, it, it comes like, Yeah, I mean, here's what I think. It's it's very powerful. To, to give you, because we still haven't explained what it is, DALI 2 allows you to put in a prompt, and that prompt can be anything. A scuba diving dog eating a sandwich, a Spartan warrior sitting at a cafeteria in a mall in the 80s, whatever you want, and it'll come up with a generated image based off that prompt. Now... Some art is better than others. Some stuff it comes up with is less good. But overall, it's very useful. It comes up with good-looking art. If I didn't tell you, if you didn't know Dali existed and I showed it to you, you'd almost certainly say, oh, who made that? You know what I'm saying? And it can be used for all kinds of things. You can expand previously existing images. People have put in the Mona Lisa and told it, like, make the image bigger. Yeah. And, it, and it kind of makes, you know... It expands the image and shows you what's outside of the Mona Lisa, like further creating it. It's very crazy. I think there are, there are still limitations to it, but it's a powerful tool. Well, really, you know, I think some of the things that you're talking about are um, legal issues that stem from it. And we're going to get to that in a minute. But just getting back to your point, it's not just image generation either because you can create text from Well, that's AI. different. That's the different. That's moving on from Dal E. There's other services, and Dali is not the only image generator by I add. There's Mid Journey is Jasper. one of them. There's Jasper. There's um, I forgot the other one, but there, there's a bunch. There's a bunch. Um, there's text generators, so you can tell the AI a prompt, write a story about Mickey Mouse, you know, going to Subway, and it'll write you a story. You can ask it, tell me fact, tell me fifteen facts about the dinosaurs, and it'll tell you fifteen facts about the dinosaurs. You know. You can you can have it right whatever and it's so realistic. Now how it's so realistic. How does it work is the question because that leads to the legal issues. Right, but the, uh, before we even get there, there is more. Uh, can I play you but some wait, sound? There's more. Can I? Can well, I... you can. But this is interesting because so we've touched on AI image generation, image generation, AI AI text, AI text, generation. text generation, and now this is another legal issue that we're going to talk about in a minute. Go mm-hmm. ahead. We have a special guest? Yeah, we have, we have a special guest. My name is Heisenberg, and I'm here to teach you a lesson. A chemistry lesson. This mystery element was discovered in 1898. Its atomic number is 84. And- now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the clip there. That was Walter White he here on here the podcast. The That's studio. right. Thank you, Brian Cranston, for coming in <laughs> to uh, play the role one more time. We really appreciate it. But in all seriousness, a little off topic though, because yes. we really don't talk about chemistry. That's right. I'm not sure thanks. what you're going. Yeah, going on about whatever. Uh, that was AI. It, obviously, you figured that out because we, you know, hyped it up with here's some AI. But that was AI audio. AI beyond image generation, beyond text generation, it has the ability to take uh, short snippets of audio and create fully realized voices out of it. 
I could go to certain applications. Now, this is the one I've tested the least because it seems like all the good applications require you to pay a lot of money to use them, which is annoying. But I have tested a little bit. You can go on to these applications. You can record maybe a half hour of voice clips and you have a perfect sounding recreation. Somebody took one of these apps, recorded Walter White voice clips, uh, and then used that to the AI generated a voice. So now they can type whatever they want, whatever sentences they want, and it'll sound like Walter White is saying it. And it's not him. And it's not him. And there has other usages as well. And we'll I want to just, you know, this is a, a bit of a teaser for a later thing we're going to discuss, but TikTok. When you edit your videos in TikTok, which are, you know, TikTok, you make very short vertical videos, you can have it so that an AI voice or a text-to-speech-like voice reads out uh, what you've typed. Now, that's not necessarily AI, but it's on the same page. And, you know, again, we'll talk about this later because there's a very uh, crazy news story about this. But essentially, you can clone people's voices using AI and then... You use text to speech to create anything you want with it. And so it's very interesting, right? I mean, there's also, you know, AI music generation, which, you know, I haven't even looked at. There's so much, and I think that all of it's very rough right now. I doubt that any of it will get to a point where it's the norm or replacing mainstream methods. Like, I don't think some the AI voice generation will be like, okay. We've th- thanks, you know, Brian Cranston or, you know, thanks Seth MacFarlane for recording a 30 minute voice clip. You never have to voice a character in Family Guy again because we'll use your voice automatically. May- yeah, maybe. I don't think it'll ever get to that point. I personally just think that's a little out of reach. But and also, you know, there's a lot of ethical issues with that. But I think, you know, th- there's a lot of usages for AI. There's images, text, audio, speech. Music, you know, multimedia. There's uses, but here's some of the legal issues that just yes. based on what you've talked about. You so you talked about TikTok, mm-hmm. right? There's a TikTok lawsuit that's highlighting yep. how AI is really harming voice actors. Yes. So there's this lawsuit where, just like you said, 30 minutes of audio is all that's necessary, and companies can now create digital clones of voices, anybody's mm-hmm. voice. And they use this this AI to do it. Um, one of them is called a Vocal ID, and it can create synthetic voices from a person's speech. Yeah, and it's it's nuts. Well, this lawsuit is basically saying that TikTok um, is using this one particular plaintiff. Her name is is Bev Standing. She's suing TikTok and alleging that the company used her voice for its text-to-speech feature without compensation or consent. And this isn't the first case. There was another voice actress, Susan Bennett, who discovered that uh, audio she recorded for another company was being repurposed for the voice of Siri. It's happened before. People have had their voices taken and repurposed using AI, and I think that's crazy. You know, I mean, this, this specific person, Bev Standing, like, that's got to be a shocker. You go on TikTok and your voice is being used to say whatever people want, you know? And then, like, I don't know who's liable for that, right? Like, I think that that's like well, a... it's the company. I mean, look... Right, but, I mean, in terms of, like, like if I was a voice actor and I found that people had the ability to use my voice to say whatever, I'd think that's not good for my public image, you know? If, and now, I'm not an important enough person to have to think about my public image. But if I did, I wouldn't want people saying, you know anything they want because that can lead to bad things or you know harmful things and then suddenly you know oh look the voice of let's just use him as an example oh look walter white said we should hate all people who who aren't this and it's like that's not a good you know what i mean that's that's bad for your public image yeah, well, it's, I, I think it's though, illegal to take your voice without your consent and make it into an ai text to speech some of the ai legal issues really are dealt with by existing laws. And I think that things like, you know, um, using somebody's voice without their permission, whether it's for commercial gain or not, I think those the, there's, there's legal recourse for that right now, a significant amount of legal mm-hmm. recourse. 
But I, I think that as this evolves, we're going to have to deal with not just the voice, but you know, I think that there's a lot of potential liability issues with respect to the, the image creation because there's already, already questions concerning who owns a Dolly image. Yeah. Because sometimes, and I've, I've played around with this just to see, you could type in, I don't know, like uh, John Lennon, for example. Yeah. And some of these AI image programs will return a actual picture of John Lennon, but maybe they'll have big black circles over his eyes or they'll mm-hmm. stretch his face out enough. But it's still, it's from another image. So the AI is modifying an image. And I think that there's a great deal of copyright issues that are going to come out of this image creation. So, you know, that's a whole other realm of law. I mean, yes, you've got your existing copyright laws, but now you're going to have new legal arguments and new laws put in place because we've not litigated cases of image ownership. And, you know, are, are the standard tests going to be enough as far as does the image, you know, is it substantially similar or any of the other legal requirements? So there's a lot to look at with AI moving into the future. Maybe, our biggest fear isn't will the AI take over and enslave us. Maybe we should be thinking about what the legal issues are, and it's yeah. going to just generate an entire new area of law. It's it's you know, exciting. Yeah. I mean, uh, here's a quote from Mark Davies. He's an, uh, a legal AI professional. He says, what happens in reality is when there are big stakes, you litigate it, and then you get the answers in a case-specific way. And I think that with a lot of these issues, like who owns Dali images, that's what it's going to come down to. Well, that's that's true, because when you don't know the answer to something, it often generates litigation. Yeah. And then from that, you develop case law. Right. And so even if something is not a statute, per se, mm-hmm. you can develop a body of law by looking at the case law. And essentially, case law is what prior courts have done with that same issue. Where where did they come out on something and then you create uh, a roadmap of that that law right because it's it's case law so yeah i mean i think that that a lot of this is going to be litigated and from that litigation we're going to say this is very similar to if you go back i guess to the the early 90s when uh napster had just come out and napster was allowing you to download um songs and music from artists at fractions of 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 you know a dollar or some of the russian sites where you'd get them for free or so from that litigation ensued because uh, record industry was losing money so out of those lawsuits we developed all of our laws concerning streaming services and what's uh you know infringement on the music and so now things like napster have have gone away and you've got streaming services and you're paying for it but that's where that that law came from because nobody knew nobody knew how it worked and so they sued litigated and then the case law came out and said here's what we're going to do so that's the way it's going to go i think with ai but ai is is extremely um interesting and rapidly developing if you ask me because you know within a couple years the programs that we've seen you know the image generation or the um text generation it's it's getting better and better and better don't you agree yeah i i do agree i think it's you know it's scary how fast it's growing but i i think the real issue not to get all poetic but it's not how AI will grow and take over us. It's how we will, you know, grow and use AI, I think, is the real, the real danger. Because as you've seen, voice actors have been screwed over. Artists are getting 
potentially plagiarized, uh, AI is threatening to take over people's jobs. I think that's the real issue. I mean, you the, speaking of the Dali thing, you know, you know that if you ask Dali to generate art in the style of a specific person who usually puts their watermark on their art, you can see when the image is generated, Dali attempted to create the watermark, but screws it up because it's not, you know, that smart. And it's clear, like, yet they took previous images and reused purpose, re repurposed them for this. And so then it's like, you know, then the then the question is, like we said, it would probably get you know solved by litigation. But who's in the right there? Does Dali have the right to do that with our images? You know what I mean? Yeah, there's there's uh, it's going to be very interesting to see, and I think it's going to start developing quite rapidly now mm -hmm. because we're already seeing the lawsuits. So, you know. Um, Maybe it won't be HAL 9000, but it's certainly yeah. going to be something that we're going to have to deal with because it's going to change the way we do things. Yeah. 100%. I, so. I'm interested to see, you know, where this goes, what's going to happen with AI images, AI voice, AI music, AI text, you know? I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think that, I think, in, in my personal prediction here, you know, Nostradamus right here. I think that AI will get a little bit bigger before reaching a point where everybody unanimously says, wait a minute. And then, you know, it's the someone, someone, you know, pokes a hole in it and it begins to deflate a little bit. And the yeah. same way that NFTs. I think it's completely different. I think that AI is going to be an emerging. Well, I think that there is, use. I think there's so much though recently that's like, oh, this is a new crazy thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, wait a minute. There's a lot of concerns here. And then it's deflated. I mean, I've I seen, we've know. seen it happen. No, not I this time. I think that AI, it's getting bigger, nope. but I'm interested to see like, I don't know what what you know what I mean like I I don't know I it's not going away and and everything I don't think it'll go away but I don't think that it'll take over all these art industries because the AI art like like I'm gonna say this I don't know this is not we're an not attack. talking about taking over art industries we're just talking about it in I society mean, in general right but I mean I think that Dali will never replace human artists I think that Dali will never replace voice actors you know what I mean or or any of the AI not just Dali but I don't know. I, I don't see it being this this massive uh, uh, used tool in, in industries. You know what I'm saying? I, I totally disagree. It's going to be so popular because people are already using it. And I think once it's perfected, if there's such a thing, once it improves, I think people are going to use it more and more because already major companies are looking to see how they can benefit from it. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode. It's me, Batman. Thanks for listening to Understanding the Law Radio. Thanks for listening to Understanding the Law Radio. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. We're available anywhere that you listen to your podcasts, including Amazon, Apple Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. Also, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks again. See you next time.